Hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi you guys, happy Sunday. It's day 97. We hope you've had a great weekend so far. If you don't know, we're the Quarantine Gardeners and this is our daily video log and us getting projects accomplished around our garden while under quarantine. And we're so happy you're here today. Thank you for watching. If you want to go ahead and click that button down below if you haven't already, then you'll get updated when we post our latest videos. So guys, today on day 97, we're hunting and treating aphids in our garden. We're going on an aphid hunt. We're going on a hunt. We know somebody that goes on a slug hunt every morning. And she's completely inspired us to go on an aphid hunt. So today we thought this would be helpful for some of you who are either new to gardening or maybe just not sure what are the signs of aphid damage and how to find them and how to know if they've infiltrated your garden. So guys, today with our aphid hunt, we're going to be using our DIY spray that we made on episode 94, day 94 of the Quarantine Gardener. So if you wanna know how to make and mix what we're spraying today, go watch that video. It was super easy. So guys, we're here in our front yard and we're walking up on our lupin. You can see it's doing okay, but it's got some interesting growth on it. It's got some interesting things going on here and here. and. You can see too, it's got some slug damage, yeah. some different things going on, but we know for a fact there's aphids on this plant. And so the way to look for those look underneath the leaves. And what you're gonna find is these little translucent, maybe even white, sometimes black, sometimes brown, and sometimes even green. But you gotta look underneath on these guys. Oh, looks like Allison spotted, spotted them. some. We're on the hunt. Here, here we go. There's a whole bunch of them in there. Okay, look at that. Oh yeah, look at those guys. Now, you can see these guys moving around right here. Yep, they've been found. And then look on the stem. Those guys right there are aphids. So they come in different stages. These guys are pretty good size, so we need to spray all these and we're gonna use our DIY spray on them. So I'm gonna move these out of the way, these leaves out of the way, Allison can get in here and really spray them. This part always makes me feel kind of bad that like I'm taking away their life, but it's either them or the plants at this point. And the problem with aphids is they reproduce really fast and they can take over a whole area in like days. Yep. Yep. So here we go. So there's those, give them, give them a good soaking, honey. Sorry guys. Yep, there's a couple more up. Further oh on my that. Gosh. Yeah, I know. Look at wow. them. Gee, it's just kind of. Yep. It's awful. It's a massacre. So, and there's more. We'll we'll get to them. Aphids will attack a lot of different plants, but they are opportunists, just like any other type of insect. Where if they sense a plant is under stress, that's an opportunity for them to come in and make a home and feed. They have little needles for mouths, and they call it. We're gonna get technical here. They call it a proboscis. And basically it's this needle that they stick in on, it's a needle on the end of their mouths and they stick it in to the plant tissue and they push in their own saliva to start breaking things down inside the plant, the tissues, and then they suck it back out. And that's how they feed. What you're gonna see when you have aphid damage on a plant is you're gonna see some crinkling of the leaf tissue and you're gonna see some discoloration, maybe even little needle pokes sometimes, depending on the plant. But here on this, here on this lupin, they're mainly on the stems, but they are on the leaves and they will crinkle the leaves. That's the easiest sign to look for, I think. Yeah. Um, if you see your lupins or any other plant looking a little weird in the leaves and looking kind of crinkly or crimped or something like that, you wanna make sure and look for the aphids. There, you can find them again underneath, on the underside of the leaves or on the stems as you just saw on this lupin. So here's another lupin and you can see if we get in there, there's little aphids on these leaves and there's slug damage. A couple other things going those on. Poor lupins. Geez. Yeah, they just, they need a lot, of, lot more water than we're giving them. So guys, there's some aphids right there. See that guy right there? That's the underside of the leaf. He's on the top part. And she's on the top part too. How rude. We need to spray these guys. Again. Need our need our head sprayer in there. Again, sorry guys. Hey, you aphids, get off our plants. Sorry. Leave our plants alone. Now, in order to really go after these guys, you would need to reapply this spray every two to three days for like a two week span. Yep. And so what Sean and I will do is we'll just come out here and spray and then we'll continue checking after that to make sure that they're not either back on that plant or haven't moved on to a new plant. Mm -hmm. They will spread from plant to plant, guys. So you gotta stay on top of them. So guys, we're gonna come over here to our tomato plants. And so 
we're gonna look for some damage over here from aphids. Something to look for is something kind of like this. This leaf right here, see how it's kind of turning over? It's kind of crinkly. That can be a sign of aphids. Now, if we look in underneath here, we're not gonna, we don't see any yet. So we're still looking here, we're still looking. Something to think about, guys, is you don't want to spray anything with the solution we have or anything else unless you really see, you physically see the aphids on your plants. If you don't see any of the aphids on there, you might see the damage, but you don't see the aphids, do not treat the plant with whatever you're using. Just makes sense. You, wanna, you don't wanna waste the product and you don't wanna hurt the plant with unneeded spray. Okay, so we're over here in a different part of our front yard. We're looking at this squash plant here. We're not exactly sure what kind it is. I know, it came back from last year. Oh, there's some aphids oh. right there. Now these these guys, you can see those little white guys right there. Those are those are aphids. Oh, oh actually, no, that's a white fly right there on the move. So we got some different pests in our garden, as probably everybody does, as you do. So um, we can spray those. Put the head sprayer in there. Oh yeah, good job, good job. And so we're gonna look, turn that leaf back over. Make sure when you're turning these leaves, be ginger with them, treat them real gingerly, be nice to them. Don't just turn them real fast because that's not good, you could hurt them. So but, just to give you a little history, this plant right here did have some aphids on it before and we sprayed it and that's where this discoloration is coming from. This is something that probably is gonna happen when you apply this spray to your plants. Um, the soap does affect the plants a little bit, as any other chemical really would. Small price to pay for ruining the entire plant though, right? Totally. Yep, it's worth, it's worth seeing this. It, it's totally worth it. Don't mind the slug damage. Gosh, slugs, white flies, aphids. Oh, oh my. my. So we have a lot more spraying and hunting to do. Um, we're gonna continue looking around our front yard and then head to our backyard. Luckily, this spray will last a while and Again, you need to reapply it every couple days for at least two weeks. Yeah. Stay on top of it, you guys. Make sure to check back every couple days. Look for those folded, crinkled leaves. That's probably the best sign to look for. Yep. And the actual presence of the aphids. So with that, leave us any questions or comments down below and uh, give us that thumbs up. Let us know we're doing a good job and subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our newest videos. And we hope that was helpful. Make sure and watch our video from a couple days ago on day 94, and we showed you how to make the solution that we used today, and it's super easy. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and for being here, and we'll be back tomorrow with another new project. Yep. So see you tomorrow, everybody. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.